we move across digital spaces. Another component that we think is really important about um, and core to Web3 is this idea of tokens with governance utilities that allow decentralized communities to really define and set the agenda or the roadmap of a project or experience. You aren't just like reading the content together. You own that content. You get to contribute to it. You get to create it um, as we do here with Matt Callis through voting. So I think at the end of the day, a lot of us are here because we're working towards and we believe in an internet that looks more like us, that works more like us. Um, and NFTs give us kind of a, fr a framework and, and a language for contributing to the digital spaces that we're part of. Well said. Thank you, Straith. Um, I think that we we've got Aaron. Aaron. Yay. Yeah. Hi, Aaron. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, well, Straith helped us out with giving us some really great insight onto Web3 as far as, you know, all of the different principles um, it encompasses and how it ties into digital experiences. Um, but now I would love to go back to our question for you, Erin. Um, how do you envision the metaverse evolving in the next five years? It's a pretty exciting time. Um, and what role would fans play in its development? Yeah, really exciting. And then thanks everyone for having me on. Really excited to be um, up here chatting to your community. Um, and I think probably to kind of set the background for that question, um, give a little bit of perspective on what our view of the metaverse is. Um, and I think it's really important to understand that the metaverse um, is just the internet growing up a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of people kind of equate the metaverse directly with um, media and content and gaming. And I think that's a part of it. But actually, um, what we think the metaverse is, is just the internet becoming a lot more converged in its user experience silos. Um, and for a start off, and what that means is instead of going to like different places to do different things, you can do more things in one place. Um, two, like those kind of things that used to be separate, like gaming and finance and um, communications and media um, are kind of being squished into um, singular user experiences and like a really good example of that would be something like um, how commerce and social and media are coming together on TikTok to create social commerce and those used to be like completely separate industries and things that were kind of apart from each other and now they're being squished into this like more um, you know connected user experience and the second thing is a more immersive web experience and so um, taking that example again, social commerce is a more immersive kind of commerce than um, what we had before in e-commerce. You're kind of interacting live with a person on the other end of that thing. Um, and so a, a, a baby step down that path, but one that has scaled already quite large and is the kind of fastest growing way for um, commerce brands to um, to sell products. And so, um, so if we think about that on steroids, you know, um, the internet will become a more immersive experience than it has been in the flat web or mobile um, side of things. I think the other thing that's a really interesting stat is that humans will spend about 45 years of their life looking at a screen. So the metaverse isn't something that's coming. It's something that already exists. It's around us every day. Um, you know, the digital um, world society economy is intertwined with our lives so much so that if you took the digital out it wouldn't fit you know it wouldn't work Th those things would collapse and so um so we're in the metaverse now and the really important part um that i think that we're doing in this space and there's kind of a fork in the road now is to ensure that the future of the metaverse has some really important foundational um differences to the way that the internet has been in the past um, if we imagine now that you know the digital world and our actual world are so intertwined that they're inseparable and that they're, they're kind of um, connected to each, each other in a way that means that whatever happens in that space affects us in the physical physical world then it's really really important that communities and individuals own that infrastructure and own the data and own the assets and own the content and all the things that make that world work. Because if they don't, then the alternate is that we kind of become slaves to the system. Um, and as we progress down the path of this, like more and more digital society and more and more digital evolution, 
um, owning those kind of foundational things about, about us that exist in digital spaces, our digital twins, you might want to call them, is super important. So that's things like your digital identity, you know, the social graph, the people who you connect to in the digital spaces, um, the content that you use to interact with, the data that's um, stored about you, all of those things are really important things for communities to take control of and own. And Web3 is the infrastructure technology that enables community ownership of those things. And I think probably the last point I'd make is, um, you know, the metaverse is primarily the data layer. A lot of people kind of jump to like all the cool content that sits on top of it. But the thing that is kind of this persistent reality that exists, um, you know, the meta in metaverse is the data layer. And so it's really important that we get that layer right um, and the infrastructure for that layer right, because that will then enable this really cool um, world of possibilities on top of it for the content layer so that we can get this, um, uh, we can deliver this kind of um, vision that we've seen in things like Ready Player One, where you can kind of jump from thing to thing and you're not tied to a single application and the content and the people and the things you own and the things you love can move, move with you between these experiences. And if we get that data layer right, then that world can exist on top of it. Um, and so fans you know, pay a huge part in that because they are the ones that are gonna run the infrastructure. They're gonna make the choices about which platforms they interact with, how they buy their cons content, how they consume their content and every choice they make that puts themselves first um, and, and um, enables that ownership at the individual or the community level is going to put us a step forward towards that better version of the metaverse. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned uh, communities owning the data. In what ways can fans expect to interact with, contribute to, and benefit from the metaverse on that data layer that you mentioned earlier? Yeah. Yeah, I think like just the, like this, like one of the simplest things is, um, you know, your, your digital identity. If you think about it today, it's quite a fragmented thing. Um, and you might have an account with Meta, you might have an account with Google, you might have an account with Apple. Um, and in each one of those instances, you don't really own that identity. It's kind of at the control of those platforms. And so if we think again, that as humans now on the internet, these, our digital identity is like a version of ourselves um, out there. That being owned by a corporation is kind of like a scary proposition. And so not only does it hinder interoperability and the cool things that web3 can deliver but it's actually kind of fundamental as a human right to own your own identity um and so as a simple example there like you know within our ecosystem we've created the future pass um technology which enables you to have a um, digital identity that you own that you control that you can carry between different applications and experiences that then you can kind of build the layers on top of um, you know you can build um, a place to store the things that you love, like, you know, content and collectibles and, and um, avatars and all the kind of fun stuff that goes along with um, Web3 fandom um, and, um, and really truly own that stuff because it is linked to the thing that you own that's at the core, which is your digital identity. And so like the fans kind of role in all of this, I think is helping to like drive, um, you know, the decision makers at the brands they love or the IP they love to understand that that's what they want on the internet. They want to be owners of the metaverse and they want to be able to um, own the content that they love. And that, and so, you know, the, the communities get behind that idea and drive that, um, that demand with um, the platforms or the, or the IP, then more of them will see why it's important to become open. Amazing. Um, so my next question is for Shara. Um, Shara, so Aaron mentioned something about important foundational aspects of the metaverse and of course, future past that you guys have for uh, Futureverse. What are some important steps that builders of the metaverse need to take to ensure that the next evolution of the internet remains accessible and inclusive for all fans? So I think to chime in on a couple things and expand on a couple things or summarize a couple things Aaron said, which will address that question. And also, uh, since I'm just joining, thanks for having us. We're always excited to talk about 
this topic and you'll hear our passion as we go. But I think one of the things that Aaron mentioned, which is really, really important, is that the evolution of the internet is simply about putting humans at the center of it versus the corporations that are at the center of it today. And to Aaron's point in referencing Ready Player One, that's what the whole premise was about. At the end of the game, the owner of the game stood to be a human or it stood to be a corporation. And that was what the full battle was over where the future went. And so by way of all the things that Aaron mentioned, and the way even to your question, which is great, is how can fans contribute and how can fans be owners of all of this? It comes down to something really simple. On the internet today, as humans, we don't have a choice. Our choices are given to us by corporations, by by identities that we log into in particular in particular siloed pr- platforms. We are truly told what to think. As scary as that sounds, it is pretty scary. We're told what to think by the headlines we see. We're told what to think by the content that is shown to us, the content that someone else chooses what we should see. We're shown the products we should buy. We're shown truly what to think. If you think to yourself, okay, I'm a human on the internet. Where do I go on a daily basis where I am sharing my belief system, where I am sharing or making a choice that wasn't given to me by someone else? It's very, very, very rare. This actually is the one platform maybe where a lot of people are sharing their beliefs. But even that, there's questions around who's actually feeding the information that's being put in front of us. So if it's as simple as we don't have choice right now today on the internet, then we believe that the metaverse puts the choice back into the hands of individual humans by exactly what Aaron said, being able to control your data, control your finances, control your assets, and permission when and where you want, how you'll engage with a brand or an experience, and you make that choice now. So if that's where we're headed, then fans being able to have control of that and contribute is by literally them saying, I will take control and decisions will be mine. And the more and more people that end up doing that, that will ultimately shift the larger whole of what's happening online. So it sounds big and virtuous, but it will happen by way of what Aaron mentioned, where everyone has their own passport, where they travel through and they make decisions as to who can access them, who can receive what information, who can see what version of them at any given time it's in your control. So I think that it ultimately is a sort of philosophical way of answering your question of the importance of the foundation. That's the importance, that when you go into an experience, you are actually in control and the other side is not in control of what you do. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. You know, having giving the control back to people is just a big, big sell, a big part of not just the metaverse, Web3, but everything in the direction that we're moving towards. Um, as far as AI is concerned, I'm going to kind of steer the direction here. Um, Aaron, how is Futureverse leveraging AI in the metaverse? And Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, kind of one of the interesting things is that we had this kind of hype cycle around the, the metaverse um, and it kind of quickly quite shifted to... Um, AI and I was at um, the Morgan Stanley China event last year and I got up and, and put a slide up you know um, the metaverse is dead long live AI and a bit of ch- tongue in cheek really because um, you know p- people love a good narrative but at the same time um, if you step back they're just two parts of the same thing you know if you think about um, what AI is bringing it's bringing um, more capability to the digital domain. Um, It's bringing, particularly at the moment, more capability to be creative in the digital domain. And so if you think about like every um, evolution of the internet, every time we've made it simpler to create a kind of content that has become the default way that content has been created on the internet. And so way back, way back when, and when I started this and, you know, the dial up days, um, it was hard to build websites. You had to know professionals. Um, they were expensive. Um, and so not many people had them. Um, and then tools came along to make it simpler to build websites. And then every every business could have one. 
Um, and then the same thing happened with social media. We made it easy for people to become, um, to build their own personal websites and also to become publishers. And so that's the default way that uh, media started to be distributed and published. Um, and the same thing's true of AI when it comes to the metaverse, that intersection. You know, the tools now are enabling everyday people to create immersive content. And we, when that metaverse hype happened, um, the, I think the missing ingredient was the ability to execute on the obvious vision that everyone understood. You know, the reason why there was so much hype was because everyone was like, cool, yeah, the internet should be a more immersive space. And then, you know, lots of money went into trying to build that version of the internet and quickly ran into a problem. There are only so many Unity developers in the world or Unreal developers in the world. Um, and so it couldn't scale because there weren't tools to make it widely, widely available to everybody. Um, and AI really does bring that, um, you know, is the solution to that problem. And at Futureverse, we have a team of 20 or so PhDs and researchers who are building at the forefront of um, what AI is going to bring to the metaverse. And there's kind of three bits to that. Um, we talked earlier about ownership, you know, and one of the core things that we think is important is that communities get to own artificial intelligence too. Um, and have a role in how it's built and um, trained and all of those kinds of things. And so uh, five years ago now, um, when we started to think about this stuff before it was all hype, um, we designed a system and painted, patented that system um, for ownership of AIs and the way that Web3 can connect to AI models and training and all those kinds of things. We've built on that over the years now um, and have a um, whole bunch of projects um, you know, capability around content generation. We published some papers last year about how uh, music and sound um, can be generated using our Gen 1 model. Um, we're about to do the same thing for 3D um, objects, avatars, items, spaces, um, and really kind of take that, that um, technology and turn it into something that um, enables everyone to go and be a creator of, of the immersive internet. Um, you can't believe in AI as a future um, without believing in the metaverse because where does all that content live? You know, if you if you think AI GC is going to be the biggest thing since sliced bread, where is that content going to live? It's going to live in the metaverse. And so um, they're two parts of the same same token. And our teams have kind of been working very hard to, to create the foundations that enable everyday people to own that stuff and create those experiences. And also to chime in one quick thing on that, to add one quick thing to Aaron's point on where, where do we expect the content to go? It's also an interesting thought to think about the expansion of the internet as a whole and how will we fill that? How will we create the places that we imagine the, the metaverse will become immersive? We're seeing it in the rollout of the all of the headsets with the Vision Pro, we're seeing how expansive when you put on the Vision Pro, your room becomes a multi layered experience, you have to have other content besides the things that are physically in that space. So when we think about it, from the perspective of the need to fill new spaces, because a lot of these technologies create more expansive areas of the internet, you'll need tools to fill those spaces. If we rely on the current technology of 3D asset creation and, and the time it takes and the cost it takes, it's simply not feasible. AI is the only path to be able to do it. Absolutely. Um, and what would you say are the key principles for designing more engaging and immersive digital spaces, especially with AI coming into play with um, spatial computing and all of that? I mean, it's a really um, interesting um, proposition. I think if I kind of hark back to what I said at the beginning of this, that the data layer is the most important thing, um, you know, for the spatial internet to exist, um, that data layer for content and for um, uh, identity and those social graphs has to be spatially aware. Um, and so that's another area that we've been working a lot on is how can you make an interface for lots of different AI models that makes them 
aware of both the user's context and the data about that user that they carry with them and the things that they love, their collectibles, all of that kind of stuff. And, and how does that fit into a spatial environment? Um, this, this bit of technology called the Murmur Matrix is the thing in our um, stack of technology that enables that to happen. We're actually close to releasing a paper that gives an overview of this um, of the of the Murmur matrix and how it adds a spatial layer to content in the metaverse, particularly around how it can interact with AI models. Um, and so really important to, again, to set those foundations. We're like early days on this and there's a huge race on at the moment to create lots of different kinds of AI with different kinds of specializations and, um, and, um, and abilities. Um, but there isn't really a unifying layer that can kind of organize data to create this, um, you know, more persistent, contextual, spatially aware view for users. Um, and so that they, as they traverse these different applications that might be powered by different models, there is this kind of singular user experience across them or the feeling of a singular user experience. And that's really what the Murmur Matrix is there to do. Um, and it'll create some really cool opportunities for, for IP and for, for um, collectibles and stuff like that, we can now start to use this technology to make collectibles intelligent. Um, and not just avatars, which is kind of the obvious thing that people um, have started to do by integrating chatbots, but not but but the environments can become intelligent. You know, the items that you wear on your collectibles can come, become intelligent and start to um, transfer emotion and other um, bits of context um, into those environments and interacting with the with the chatbots and other things to provide a richer experience for those users. It's a really exciting time. You know, there's going to be so many awesome things that come out of this um, space to make, you know, technology funner to interact with, to make IP come to life in more ways than we ever have done before. Yeah, I am so excited. I cannot wait. I've never even heard of Murmur Matrix, so that's something else for me to dive into later. Um, I, I'm going to divert the uh, the conversation really quickly. I want to ask Straith just one question. Um, Straith, we've launched some pretty amazing projects and campaigns for our DC community. Can you go into what your approach has been to creating digital experiences with this community and what kind of what can metaversal experiences unlock for them? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think that there are a couple of pr principles that we're following and that we're working against that are really rooted in centering and listening to and resourcing this community and the communities that we work in. Um, one of them is about sort of multimedia storytelling. We know that a good digital experience is inherently multimedia. It's not going to be finite. It's going to unfold across different formats and different touch points. And it may take a long ass time. It may take two years. It may take forever for that story to unfold. I think that that's really cool because it's, again, something that we're building in real time together. The other point about these experiences that we try to build in is that they have their own economies and they have their own value systems. And those value systems are ones that are set by the community. They're stories that are shaped and shared by our participants. So we look to provide a structure. Um, everybody else, you all decide and determine what happens next. I think lastly, a principle that we try to adhere to is that everything is open. Anybody can participate. You can buy a collectible. You can become part of a, our community. Nothing here is exclusive. Everything, again, belongs to you as the fan. And, and that's kind of the mission. Since the very beginning, um, what we've envisioned for this platform is the ability for people to create and own their place inside the DC superhero universe, um, to own an artwork, sure, but also to own your story and to have the ability to craft new ones. So as we've been thinking about like what metaverse experiences can mean, the idea, the ethos, the mission of the folks of Futureverse becomes really key and really critical. We're looking for the types of experiences that allow you all to, again, begin to craft and create new stories, which you have been doing with us over the course of the past two years, to begin to play in the world that you started creating and that you started authoring feels really unique and profound. And it gives us the ability to, for the first time, maybe start to see ourselves in the worlds that we've been shaping behind the scenes. Again, we've kind of been contributing to and, and creating canon here for the past two years together. I think thinking about what it means to really play in that world in a visceral and spatial sense, like to be and to be seen in character in our cowls, like that to me is super, super exciting in terms of where we go next. Thank you, Straith.
So we are up on time, but I wanted to ask the three of you one last question to kind of tie in what Straith just talk, talked about and what Aaron and Shara have been talking about. What role do you see digital collectibles playing in the Futureverse ecosystem? <laughs> I mean, I think that's, that's to anyone who kind of follows along um, with what we've been building, that's kind of like the center, I think, for um, how we're thinking about this immer new immersive internet um, evolves and bringing IP to life, whether that's Web3 native IP that's been kind of co-created with the communities, whether it's user-generated um, IP that they can now build with our tools, or whether it's working with um, brand partners and, and you know, much-loved IP around the world to give it a new life. That's our core mission. You know, we think that the immersive internet is going to be powered by these great um, brands and content and stories like you just mentioned straight, straight um, but in a different way, in a way that is more open, that is more interoperable, that allows for um, co-creation uh, with with communities, you know, whether that's a uh, the next way that movies are made, for example, that involves the community in the process, or whether that's um, just like you said, kind of owning your identity through um, a piece of law that you've created as a community member in a digital space. That's our mission to, to make that a reality at Futureverse. And so it's very central to what we're doing. I also think that they're, they're truly the functionality of the next version of the internet. They're how you show up as an avatar. They're how you exchange things. They're, they're, a currency in a lot of ways. They're how your space is decorated. They are how they are things you earn. They are things you trade. They're just everything will come to know. The the younger generations in the world will only know digital collectibles and digital assets for every part of how they function in society. It's just a matter of how we see it unfold. But to us, it it's the it's the epicenter of it all. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think we see collectibles as more than something that you collect, like it's a keystone to identity. And they really begin to become that when you can start using them in a spatial environment. Like, ultimately, we want to be able to bring our things with us no matter where we are online. And identity isn't something that uh, should belong to necessarily a company or a platform. It's something that has to travel with you. It has to be boundless. 100%. Um, Unfortunately, we don't have time to open up for Q&A today, but if anyone has any specific questions, please post them to DCNFTS Discord and we can respond to you there or at mention any of us here on X and we can reply to your question. Um, but before, is there, and before we wrap up, I know that we are really beyond our time that we originally had scheduled for. Um, does anyone, would either Aaron Straith or Shara, would you like to leave the uh the x space with any of your words any parting words the only to say thank you and looking forward to doing more with you absolutely we would love to continue to do more x spaces with you thank you guys for having us we appreciate it yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. massive gratitude to the community and for everybody who joined us today thank you guys all so much Yes, thank you all so much. Thank you, Aaron, Shara, and Straith for sharing your brilliant minds with us. We really enjoyed hearing everything that you had to say. Um, it's so clear that each and every one of us are a big part of this digital shift, and all, we all have a big role to play in it, shaping the spaces where everyone can connect, create, and explore. Um, please follow any of us on X Spaces. Follow us on Discord as well. Don't forget to um, you know, continue to build we're going to continue to build more inclusive and interactive digital universes together, and we will see you all.